right. Like looks good. Oh, there goes my cat. She just got done eating her breakfast. <laughs> Morning, everyone. Happy Memorial Day. Welcome to Jesse's Occupational Awareness Show. As always, I'm your host, Jesse. I'm here to bring you guys some more stories. A couple episodes ago, I talked about a series that I was going to be doing titled When Good Inmates Go Bad. I sat and thought about a bunch of them and actually wrote them down so I would remember them. And looking at it helps bring back a lot of those memories. So this one today will go all the way back to when I was on OJT. I've done quite a few videos in my earlier archives about what the OJT process was like. Be sure to check those out. Get yourselves caught up if you haven't already. When you're on OJT, you're not part of any kind of official shift. You don't go to shift turnout. You don't get assigned a specific pod, a dorm, an area. You report to the field training officer, the FTO. In this case, it was FTO Lewis. And you go to different parts of the facility. Medical, chow hall, mail room. You get exposure to all the different areas of the penitentiary. So that way, when it comes time for you to put down what shift you want, you've at least experienced some aspects of what it is. Not enough to really prepare, but some of it. SEG had its own kind of uh, policies and procedures. Segregation was basically the prison within the prison. It had its own chow hall. It's had its own, what was it, uh, property room inventory. Okay, And this particular tale is going to involve when I was working in the property room. I absolutely hated, hated work in mailroom and work in property. It was boring. It was dull. If you were in the mailroom, you were just opening letters, looking at them, scanning through it, looking for God knows what, the secret escape code that they were all working out with each other. It was very monotonous. Property was even worse. When guys would come from different facilities into the styles or when they would leave, the property would get bagged up in a red sack, basically like an onion sack. In fact, that's what it was called, that you get from the feed store, that you get from, from one of the wholesale grocery stores. All those items would go in there and it would have a property inventory sheet on it. It was the job of the property manager, Officer Bro. I did enjoy working with Miss Bro. She was a good source of information. It's just boring working in the property area. Probably about as boring as these videos that I make. So anyway, what would happen is when guys would get transferred into SEG, all their property would get bagged up. If they were in general population or anywhere else in the facility, the dorms, whatnot, whatever they had got bagged up. They went to the, the segregation area and the property went to the property inventory room. And it stayed there until the manager and whoever she had working with it would get to them. Okay, so she enjoyed having the OJTs because it could speed up the process a little bit and they could get that property out to those guys. I can't tell you how many times when I was finally on SEG, how many times a new guy would ask, pretty much every time you walk past the area, hey boss man, boss man, hey when am I going to get my property? Hey where my property at man? Man, I don't fucking know what to tell you. Miss Bro has it, she'll get it. When she gets here, well, look, man, look, look, look here, man, man, look, look. Hey, when you go on break, hey, you, you, you stop by that proper room, see if you get that for me, man. Hey, man, look, I'll give you a week worth of shower, man. I'll give you a week, child, man. I, I, I ain't gonna go nowhere, man. Just, just get my property for me, man. Yeah, I knew a lot of guys that cut deals like that. You had to be real careful doing that shit. I'm not even gonna get into it. It's not what this topic's about. So on this particular day, I'm working with Miss Bro. And when property needed to go out to the different housing units, we put it up on one of these big carts. Basically think of kind of like the carts, like at Home Depot and Lowe's that you load up the lumber on. Not a shopping cart, but just flat metal, four wheels and rails all around it and you, you push it. Man, that thing would make so much noise. Anytime you hit a pothole, it sounded like a freaking, I don't know, dump truck bouncing around on the highway just just loud and inmates knew the sound of that cart when it was rolling down and they start yelling beating banging hollering they knew property was on the move the guys didn't have a whole lot to do usefully so property was just something else that they could use trafficking and trading 
So on this particular day, I load up the cart, got the property inventory, and I'm supposed to take it to one of the pods. I remember the incident, I just don't remember the specific pod. For argument's sake, we'll call it C pod, Charlie pod, okay? Because I was OJT, I couldn't go anywhere past the actual open door. Once the door opened up and I was on the pod, I was supposed to stop right there by the picket. I couldn't take the bags and go to the individual cells, pop the slots, give it to the inmates and leave. That would have been too easy. No. I basically had to stand there with the cart until the two officers that were roving around, if they could get to it, they could take over that property and then they could start passing it out. It was just one more thing added to their day. I've already covered videos about what it was like working in SEG and what happened when somebody came in and added to the work of it. And that's basically, I didn't know it at the time, and that's basically what I was doing, was adding work to the floor bosses. But the job's the job. So on this particular day, I've got this property and I push it in. And I'm standing there and one of the inmates that's in the day room, he yells out over to me, hey Woodrow, Woodrow, is that you? And I looked over. No, nah, man, I'm Carter. Oh, man, you look just like Sergeant Woody. Hey, where's he been, man? I thought that was you. Don't know, man. Hadn't seen him. Dude, was he was happy. He was smiling. He kind of slapped the bars a little bit. Hey, I thought that was old Woody. Thought he was coming back to us, man. Oh, man, I wish he was here, man. man. You just made my day. Okay. Cool. Good. Glad, uh, glad I could help out with that. So I'm standing there with the cart, the two floor bosses. It was an older Hispanic CO and an older white female CO. They walk past, don't even acknowledge me. Go on up, do their thing. And I'm just standing there leaning on the cart. Okay, I was trying to be professional. I didn't want to... What the fuck is taking these guys so long? It was holding up my day, and I knew bro was going to wonder where I was. So... I didn't really know what to do. I tried to talk to the picket boss, and any time I would, I'd get one of these, while the picket boss just kept looking forward and pressing buttons on the panel. I didn't know it at the time. This dude was, was just ignoring me and faking like he was doing something on the panel, just because he knew that I didn't know what he was doing. Pause. Dude was just being a freaking turd. So, I'm standing there hanging out, and I hear a lot of beating and banging. I don't know exactly how long I had been in there, but it had been a pretty decent while. Again, I, I didn't know what to do. Boot ass CO. I'm thinking, do I take the cart and bring it back to Miss Bro? She probably just gonna send me right back to these guys. They may be ready to take over this, and then I leave and. Yeah, which, which hands, which way do I go? So I just stood there and hung out with it, all right? Beating, banging, loud hollering, inmates start yelling. It's in the tier up over next to where I'm standing. So the day room is here. It's over in that tier, over in that area. And there's a lot of activity going on. And the two COs come trotting down. They're, they're up on the second tier. They come trotting down, and as I'm walking by, I'm hearing... Shut it down, shut it down, shut it down, shut it down. And that was their voices trailing off as they were going around. I'm just standing there, boot ass, I don't know what's going on. And he's like, hey man, hey, 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 boss man, come here, come here, boss man. I can't come in the place, man, I'm OJT. First fucking mistake. Hey, hey what'd they say when they was going by, man? What, 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 was, what was they saying? It sounded like they were shutting it down. Oh shit. He turns around, starts yelling out, Hey, they shutting it down, they shutting it down. More than twice. He's just constantly and the place fucking explodes. It what they meant was they were gonna stop moving uh moving wreck. They basically they weren't gonna take any more inmates out of the cells, move them to wreck. They were going to shut down for the day. So anyone that was expecting to go to rec for that day, the recreational room, the day room, they weren't going. The only Once they shut it down, the only thing they were going to do was feed chow, 
and yeah, that was pretty much it. What had happened, I didn't know it at the time, an inmate was trying to commit suicide in the cell. He was cutting himself with his razor that he wasn't supposed to have, and he was telling, not his, his celly, but the cell next to him, a celly would be if there were two inmates in the cell, there were only one in SEG, so the neighboring cell, they consider them cellies. He was trying to talk him out of it, and then this guy starts yelling out, and the two COs that were over the, on the other side, they heard that going on, and this inmate's yelling out ICS, Incident Command System. That was code word for if something bad was going on, fire, flood, suicide, COs were supposed to respond to it. Inmates would yell that out sometimes. In this case, they did. So the COs were responding to it, and they were meaning they weren't going to move anything else around. A normal, mature adult would just be like, oh, man's trying to commit suicide? Let me let these guys do their job and leave everything alone. Nope. The second they heard they're shutting it down, the place fucking exploded. They were all pissed because they knew they weren't going to go to wreck for the rest of the day. If they had anything else coming in, commissary, law library, pill nurse would still come in and make rounds. They had to get their medicine. But any other kind of recreations, done. They're, they're just sitting in the cells the rest of the day. So now they're going to act up because they're pissed. Sounded like an absolute freaking concert hall. Picket Ball sticks his face down, leads into the slot. A hey, good job, rookie. Thanks a lot. You just you just set this off, man. You, you, don't, you don't even know, do you? Looked at him. Hey, you may as well go ahead and roll that fucking thing out of here. Hey, ain't nothing going on in here now. So I turned around, rolled it out, stopped at the door. Door. Doesn't open. Door. Guy makes me call back for it three times. Just, just fucking with me. I hear the solenoid pop. Go to push it. Door's still locked. I hear the solenoid pop again. I'm able to push it. And I hear it click. He was hoping he'd catch me. I was able to get the door open. Got the door open, pushed it, went down. At this point, I, I don't remember who the supervisors were. I know there was a lieutenant and a sergeant. They weren't running, but they were walking at a very extreme fast pace. As I'm pushing the cart out, I look and I go ahead and push it across the hallway. The hallway was probably about eight feet or so wide, eight to 10 feet. I go ahead and push it out of the way. They push past me go running on in the door at their trot speed and I'm like okay push the cart back going back to the property room push it in there like uh not gonna be able to pass this property out miss bro sounds like there's there's an incident going on over in the pond said yeah it sure is somebody told everybody about shutting down and now they're all off the chain and I went I mentioned something about shutting it down and the inmate in the day room heard me. She said, you told him that? Oh, man. Okay, well, I don't guess we're gonna get anything else done today. You may as well go on back to FTO. Basically what had happened because I told that guy about them shutting it down. He went off the chain causing everybody else to go off the chain and then You know as much of a you couldn't really have riots and sig because they're all locked up But they would start beating bang and hollering the cells trash and stuff flooding starting fires and well, I kind of created that all because I was a little bit comfortable around this one particular inmate who I thought at the time, I still hadn't had much exposure to the inmates, who I thought at the time was just smoking and joking, having a having a day, having a conversation. I had no idea that was going to happen. Rookie mistake, lesson learned. I did hear about it the next day from my FTO. Never heard about it from those other officers. That was a different shift. I didn't work with them when I was on shift, didn't work with those supervisors. But needless to say, anytime they saw me, I wasn't a very popular individual. 
all because of one little mistake and one inmate to just start shouting and yelling. Just another day in TDC. Folks, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'll close this out and get ready to have more content for you guys. Tomorrow is going to be a really big day. Actually, not tomorrow. Tomorrow's the 31st. Wednesday, June the 1st, is a really big day for me. I'm finally getting my next promotion. I've been an E5 Petty Officer Second Class for a pretty decent amount of years. I finally made the list. I'm making First Class Petty Officer, Bosun Mate First Class. Extra chevrons, extra pay, all that kinds of good stuff. So good things are definitely coming this way. Y'all take care. Be safe. I'll see you guys in the next video.